Once again, hello, Danny here from the Community Broadcasting Association of Australia, welcoming you to today's webinar, uh, Funding Support and Opportunities for Community Broadcasters in Light of COVID-19. Thank you so much to the Community Media Training Organisation for their support of today's webinar and indeed all of our webinars. Um, we're being broadcast today uh, from Gadigal land and as such I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land upon which we meet, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, paying respects to elders past, present and emerging. Uh, we're also attempting to get all of this happening, uh, streaming on Facebook Live, um, as is the case with Facebook sometimes, you do experience some difficulties, but hopefully all that is being fixed up at the moment. Um, that's it from me. I uh, would like to, uh, I'll just get my slides going first, uh, if that's all right. Thank you so much for everyone's the infinite patience with us here with the webinars. Um, today's session will be presented by John Bissett, CBAA CEO, Ian Stanistreet, uh, CEO of the Community Broadcasting Foundation and, and Holly Friedland, the CBAA Project Coordinator uh, for Government Relations. Uh, thank you so much to everyone for making themselves available to take part in today's session. I'm gonna mute myself, turn my camera off, so you can lay that one fear of having to look at me for the next little while. And uh, in the first instance, hand it over to John and Holly. Thanks, Danny, and hello to everyone. Um, I'm up first today and Holly's joining um, for a bit, uh, bit later and then Ian, um, as I think Danny mentioned, uh, will fill us in on some CBF funding after that. Um, first of all, I just wanted to talk fairly briefly about uh, what the sector, um, community broadcasting sector is, is doing in relation to um, the coronavirus um, situation. And certainly I think what we've learned over the last few weeks is that it's an extremely, uh, we, we knew this already, but it's an extremely diverse sector how the um, how the situation is affecting stations uh, is very different from one station to another station. And what we're going to try and do today is talk fairly generally, answer your questions, but also point you in the right direction to get the advice that's very specific to your station. Um, and as I said, stations are affected in different ways. If you have staff, um, you have access to some government schemes that stations that are volunteer only don't. Um, Stations are affected in different ways. Big stations uh, have huge bills to pay on a very ongoing basis. Little stations obviously have, have bills as well that are very important to pay, um, but are affected, affected in very different ways. So firstly, um, how we, what are we doing for the sector? Um, the CBF um, and the CBAA are working collaboratively um, as part of a crisis task, task force to see how we can access and repurpose some of the existing resources um, the sector has. And Ian, later on in this webinar, we'll talk um, a bit about uh, what the CBF specifically is doing around grants uh, and help. Um, and the situation is changing every day. So the, the task force is keeping an eye on that um, and uh, we'll continue to monitor the situation and find ways to best help stations. Um, we're also leveraging um, the work of the sector to increase support um, or, uh, and ask the government. We're asking government for a $5 million one-off contribution to add to the CBF's um, COVID-19 crisis fund. We're also looking for some philanthropic uh, funding to, to boost that fund. Um, we're calling on the government for an immediate commitment to um, uh, to maintaining the sector's funding levels in a year and a few months. Uh, the sector's funding uh, nominally drop or drops from 20 back to 15 or 16 million. We're asking for that to be addressed right now so that the sector has certainty in planning uh, going forward. We're calling for greater use by the government um, of community radio stations uh, in terms of the government health and information messages and there's certainly some interest from government there, but it's a, it's a quite complex situation and even distributing funds across the sector is quite complex. Um, and we're calling for, um, to, to ensure that community radio stations that are, um, can access the recently announced public interest news gathering project, which is 
or program, which has essentially at the moment been announced for commercial broadcasters, but um, certainly the community broadcasting sector uh, needs to be considered in that process as well. Um, we are in a lot of cases, um, and even more so during this COVID-19 situation, the um, key media in local areas, whereas commercial media has moved out, or in a lot of cases, local newspapers have shut down, whether permanently or temporarily during this period. Um, community radio is often the only news source in many country towns around Australia. Um, I'm also sitting um, a member of the Charities Crisis Cabinet, which is a, um, a group of uh, 15 to 20 of us across the cha broader charity sector that are looking at what we can do uh, to help the broader charity sector, of, of course, of which community radio and community broadcasting is part of. And one of the things we're doing there is asking for um, uh, a removal of some of the red tape around fundraising legislation and uh, you'll hear more about that in the coming weeks. Um, we're also working, um, so there the government asks essentially, we're also working with philanthropists um, to, to shoot, secure money that can help us pass on savings to stations around CBAA um, services. For example, the Judith Nielsen Institute has funded us um, substantially to ensure that community radio stations can take national radio news um, free for the next uh, six months. So if, uh, if your station uh, wants a free news service, contact the CBAA or the Community Radio Network team from the CBAA and we can help you there. Um, and uh, we're also just more generally working to, to make sure, uh, as part of the crisis cabinet, to make sure that community radio uh, or not-for-profits more generally can access the various uh, Federal, federal and state government stimulus packages. Um, and First Nations Media through First Nations Media Australia have been um, very successful in uh, uh, getting some funding from government to produce some in language and targeted messages. Um, there's a question there from Jason. Um, the, the National Radio News Package um, is available to all stations, not just existing subscribers. So please contact the, the team and you'll be able to get access to that. Um, for this six month period. Um, the next bit I wanted to talk about, and I'd like to run a, um, a bit of a, a poll if we can. Um, Danny, I'll ask you to do that. A bit of a poll um, to give us some idea from you all what the extent of the financial stress is that you're um, feeling. So Danny, can you just run that poll, the financial stress poll, and if everyone could answer that uh, pretty quickly, that would be much appreciated. All right, I'm just trying to bring that up now, if you'll bear with me. Everyone, um, I'll get this happening. If you, uh, John, I'll get you to uh, keep on talking while I deal with my tech issues and make it happen. Wonderful. Um, so firstly, well, while we're waiting for that poll to come up, um, I think, you know, what's um, important to understand during this time is that uh, the entire country and the entire world is, um, or a large proportion of it is under financial stress. and. Um, managing through that is not an easy thing to do, um, but even with government support and CBF support and other support, um, a lot of stations are feel, still going to feel um, um, financial stress. So I wanted to talk uh, fairly briefly around um, how that, uh, uh, how to deal with financial stress during this period. Um, I think there's a few things. I think it's really important that you understand uh, what your current financial position is. I'm certainly talking to stations um, and helping them with some of those conversations and so is the rest of us or some of the other CBAA team. But it's essential to make informed decisions to understand what your actual financial uh, situation is. So please make sure you're across that. Um, you know, often during a normal situation, you might, you might be, you know, only looking at your financial reports once a month. But during a crisis like this, it's possibly more important to be looking at it, uh, looking at your financial situation on a much more regular basis. Um, and cash flow is critical. Uh, you know, you need, to, you, you need to keep an eye on your cash flow and um, Ian will talk a bit more, but the, you know, one of the CBF schemes uh, is designed to get some more immediate cash into smaller um, community radio stations. And he'll talk about um, that a bit later. Um, and check for government assistance, government eligibility. Um, it's really important that um, uh, you look, and, and Holly will talk about this in a few minutes too, um, as will I, look at what is available for your station and 
uh, there could be federal government support, state government support, local government support. We're trying to be across as many of them as possible, but I think it's really, the onus really is on stations as well as, and we'll help you as much as we can, but stations to check what they might be eligible for. Um, uh, Danny, just let us know if you can do that survey um, or not. It's just um, sorting it out now, sorry. No problem. Um, I think one of the most important thing too is communicate with your stakeholders. Um, let them know what you're doing during this um, uh, COVID-19 crisis. Um, if you have staff, um, obviously you have a, you know, a really important obligation to keep them informed about what you're doing, what your plans may be and what the impacts may be. Um, and, you know, I think what's really important is re remain calm and clear um, in what you are telling them. Um, and I think what's really important is, fellow, if you owe money, follow up with those people, talk to them, don't leave it until it's overdue. Uh, I don't think I've ever known a more, a period where you could have those conversations in, a, uh, a, in such a way, whereas you can ring people up and say, hey, look, COVID-19 has had this impact on us. We're not going to be able to pay the bill on time. Can we talk about how we might be able to do that? Do that really early and upfront because that is a critical thing to do to make sure that you can your, your station is um, uh, is able to keep operating and keep paying its bills. And certainly, you know, telcos and uh, utility companies and um, local governments and the ATO and and a lot of the organisations you may pay. Uh, have bills with are being very um, uh, very understanding during this process and have policies and processes in place. And of course, and I'll talk about this, um, you know, I think what's also, um, I'll talk about this a little bit in a minute, is around commercial leasing, is your leases with your, um, with your, your, for your studios and your um, transmission facilities. Um, and if it's, if it's bills you have with the CBAA, contact us early, having, have a chat to us. Um, we can work through all of those sorts of things uh, with, you, with you as well. Um, I mentioned obligations in, in response to employees. You have a lot of serious obligations in terms of employees. So if you have employees, you can get information through Fair Work um, or various state organisations. Um, there's a JobKeeper payment, which I'll talk about in a, little, in a few minutes. Um, and there's also changes to awards, which are, you know, employment awards, which are really important for you to understand and know about. And there's details of those on the uh, Fair Work website. And often um, uh, community radio employees will be governed by the, um, uh, uh, forgot the name of the award. Holly. The Broadcast Award. The Broadcast Award or the, um, the other one. The um, Clerks Award. Or the Clerks Award. Um, those are the two key awards and, and, um, and they have been varied. So keep an eye on those. Um, they create some greater flexibility. In terms of commercial leasing, um, if you have a lease with local council, with a, um, another third party government, um, and you're gonna to struggle to pay your bills or your lease bills, ring them up, talk to your landlord. Um, the Australian government has announced a moratorium uh, over the next six months for commercial and residential tenancies. So if you're in, in financial stress, you can't be kicked out. Um, and there's a mandatory code of conduct for that as well that governs um, the, the sorts of payments uh, or how, how payments can be deferred and what you have to pay for and what you don't have to pay for. And again, it depends on your situation and different states that can be slightly different. So I encourage you to look into that um, situation. Um, the other thing is, um, is build your networks. This is a great opportunity to be talking to people um, about working together, doing different things, helping with um, bills. Don't forget that, you know, a good place to start um, to share ideas is the community, the CBAA Facebook group around COVID-19. And we'll put that list, that link up if you haven't already joined. Many of you probably have. Um, that's a great place to start and having conversations to see what others are doing and finding out what are good things you can do during this um, period. And there's been some great conversations this week and last week around Anzac Day and, and different um, uh, things. Um, the, um, 
the next thing I wanted to talk about is, you know, keep informed about changes. This changes every day. There's a new funding scheme. Um, there's a new, um, uh, and Danny's just put the poll up. Seems the poll technology is not working. So if you can just use the number one, two, three, or four, um, just give us a bit of an idea how you are, how concerned you are about the viability of your station over the next three months. That would be uh, very helpful. Just give us a bit of an idea. Um, the, uh, and as I was saying, keep informed about changes. Things are changing on an extremely regular basis. Um, stations are affected in different ways. Um, uh, but keep an eye on our websites, the Facebook group, government information, the CBF Facebook, uh, CBF social media and websites, and we'll keep everyone informed. Um, the, uh, I've got a, um, a question there from Annette Smith, which I might, um, I'll, I'll go to an answer. It's about charities and DGR status as I go through some of the grants because it's not a simple uh, question. So, um, um, we'll now have a bit of a talk about uh, funding opportunities um, and there's a whole number of them and we're not going to be able to here go through them all but we'll go through some of them and firstly um, we were going to ask the poll about how many stations here had staff and how many didn't. Um, Danny I think we'll, we'll skip that poll but um, there's certainly two, two clear way, two key issues here in terms of eligibility for stations. And I'm going to talk firstly about the broad federal government um, funding scheme, economic stimulus schemes um, and the JobKeeper scheme and the Boosting Cash Flow scheme apply to stations that have paid staff. Um, and I'm presuming in this case those staff are being paid um, with a return, even if it's being a zero return, going to the ATO uh, for tax being taken out. So if you're paying them under the table, um, one, you shouldn't be, and two, um, that's not going to be very helpful in this situation uh, for you. So for paid stations with paid staff, and I'll come to stations that don't have paid staff uh, in a few minutes. Stations with paid staff, um, you can certainly access the boost. First of all, um, if you're paying, um, um, uh, making returns um, for tax being taken out or even zero being taken out of station uh, for staff, you should be receiving at least $20,000 in your bank account. Uh, sorry, you won't receive it in your bank account. You'll be receiving a $20,000 credit on your ATO uh, returns imminently. I know some staff, um, uh, some stations have received that credit already. I was speaking to a couple yesterday who have received that credit. So if you have just even less than one, if you just have part-time staff and you're taking tax out of or reporting tax, then you will receive at least $20,000 up to $100,000 credit over the next few months. Um, that's obviously going to be extremely helpful um, for uh, stations. Um, and there's no, um, basically no criteria on that except that you have paid staff. The second one is JobKeeper. Um, if you have, and this also only applies if you have paid staff, and most of you will have heard of JobKeeper uh, in the uh, media. JobKeeper is a $1,500 per, for, per forecast payment um, um, uh, that is beginning to roll out in May. Uh, you need to apply if you haven't already um, and you might be eligible, I suggest you go to, I think it's the ATO or the JobKeeper website, simple Google will find you the right address and apply. Um, and there will be more information you need to submit, um, but it's uh, $1,500 per staff member per fortnight that you would uh, could be eligible for. The eligibility criteria also is if you are a charity, uh, DGR status, there was a question about this a little bit earlier, DGR status is not relevant in this case. So if, you're, if you have DGR status, uh, in most of the time you will be a charity and therefore you have to, you can only apply if you, um, if your revenue is going to drop 15%. And there's various methods and criteria about how you work that out, which I won't go into today because it there's different models you apply for different ways you do things. 
but if your revenues have dropped by 15% you are, and you're a charity, you are likely eligible. If you're not a charity, um, then it's 30%. And I would suggest two things. One, go and apply to be a charity on the ACNC website. You, you're generally eligible and it's not a particularly long process. Though I can't guarantee that they'll process it in time to lower your threshold from 30 to 15, but go and register to be a charity. Um, if you're not a charity, it is 30% you have to show. And there's again, general ways you can do that. So I'd encourage stations with staff to go and do that. It's, um, uh, you know, some of the stations I've been um, talking to, that is going to be the difference between them um, closing their doors or staying operating. And just to add in there, if you need a hand with the charity application, feel free to give us a call. We can walk you through as much as possible. Um, as John said, it might not necessarily enable you to access stimulus packages that have already been announced, but for future ones, if you become a charity now, um, it would definitely be worth doing because we don't know what the next few months may hold. Yeah. Um, there's a, they're the key um, federal government packages that we're currently eligible for. Um, Holly's going to talk um, a little bit about some of the state government uh, packages now. Um, yeah, so I'm going to keep it really brief and maybe in the interim, um, I can see this 3MDR there. I saw someone from New South Wales. Um, if you want to just pop your um, state in the chat box so we can um, see that. But I guess there's a few key points, some of which have already been addressed by John and addressed in the chats as we've been going through. Um, I think the states have been working a lot better to address the needs of not-for-profits, sorry, the states and territories have been generally doing a little bit better at addressing the needs of not-for-profits and or charities and or ones without staff. Now that's a broad statement because I know each um, state and territory has different um, priorities, but um, some of the packages are tied to, say, JobKeeper, and if you get JobKeeper, you get that package. Um, in New South Wales, for example, somebody had a question about the $10,000 grant. Um, they have actually, I gave them a call two weeks ago, and in that period, they've changed the eligibility. So it is actually, um, if you're in New South Wales, you can get an up to $10,000 grant, um, including if you're a not-for-profit, and you don't have to be a charity. However, um, you have to have an annual turnover of more than $70,000 and employ a staff member um, and experience at least 75% decline in turnover, which is similar in Victoria. So a couple of the major states are really trying to address uh, people that have been really severely impacted by the public health orders. So like restaurants and cafes, um, things like this, I really think that stations, if you've lost more than 75% decline in turnover because you get your sponsorship from all of those businesses, I think you have a very good case to make that you would be eligible. So again, just go and check um, on the eligibility criteria. Um, as I said, these are changing often of what's happening as the states and territories are making announcements. And then within two weeks, figuring out the small print. I'll put up some links to the key ones at the end of this, um, this webinar so you can access those that information. But um, my tips would be to look at the fine print. Um, if you, some of the states and territories aren't necessarily saying that not-for-profits are ineligible, it's just not very specific. So just pick up the phone and give them a call. Um, I think the more pressure from not-for-profits uh, calling and asking about their eligibility is always helpful. Um, and I've done that with a few of the states just to get some more clarity and it's been really um, helpful so far. So um, they've all got call lines that um, you can call. They also, most of the states and territory also all seem to have um, business support phone numbers. So if you're um, struggling with some of the issues that John mentioned, you need some help around your financial stress, um, you've got some accounting questions or anything like that, um, give them a call. They're all states and territories are doing quite well to address the issues. The other thing that they're doing, as John said, is around rent. So some of the states and territories have um, ability to uh, not pay your rent if you're in a state-owned building and things like this. Um, so that would be in a rent sense. Um, WA has released some really good not-for-profit grants through Lottery West. There's $159 million um, there. Also, some of the states have um, released early their arts funding. So if your station gets arts funding um, or could be eligible in that way, depending on how you service your community, I'd definitely look into your state's art funding bodies. Um, for example, the Queensland one, um, they've got some good arts funding announced. And 
Again, in Queensland, I would just recommend that looking at the small print, you know, it's called the Queensland COVID-19 job support loans, but it can actually be used for um, rent rates or buying goods. So sometimes it's not always as clear as they would like. Um, Someone said they're from the ACT. Um, the ACT um, has some rental relief to ACD tenants in government-owned properties um, and a community package, which again is a little bit vague at the moment um, or when I last looked. Um, but the ACT government will work with non-government organisation partners to develop a community support package. So again, pick up the phone, as John said, make those connections um, to be able to progress in that way. Um, and the Northern Territory has a really interesting package, although I don't think anyone's here from the NT today, um, but $5 million for not-for-profits and community organisations for grants up to $100,000. So there's a lot of support there. Um, and I guess I would remind you that if you're not eligible for JobKeeper or the federal steps packages, to please go and speak, look at the state and territory packages. Um, give them a call if you're uncertain. Give us a call, we'll help as much as we can. But um, this information is getting updated all the time. And also I put together just a very quick overview of a bunch of grants that are eligible, that are open at the moment. Um, the FRR, if you're in a regional station, that they've got four or five grants on at the moment. Um, Judith Nielsen Institute has got some support for freelance and casual journalists, um, some of the big banks and things like this. Um, I'll leave it there. Um, I guess the only other thing I would say is that there is a lot of money going around at the moment. And for the most part, people genuinely want to help. I know there's some challenges around if you're a charity, if you're not a charity, if you're not for profit, um, but there's a lot of opportunity. Um, so if you're not eligible for one thing, don't worry. I don't think your door is shut there. And Ian's about to talk about CBF. Um, and the last point I would make is just also, um, please also call your local council. Um, there's a lot of local council grants I've seen too. So that's another really good avenue that could be worthwhile pursuing. Great, and don't hesitate to let your local MP know um, what's troubling you and stressing you as well. I mean, it's always very handy to have a really close relationship with your local MP. Um, that helps feed back up to uh, government and the minister and decisions that are being made. And, and you know, um, a lot of stations have very close relationships with their local MPs, particularly some of the regional or rural stations. So um, use that, talk to them, um, let them know what's going on and how you're struggling. Um, yeah. yeah, just to add to that, sorry, um, not that there's anything open now, but at the end of last year, last year, um, there's often some new type, well, not new types of grants, but more new to me, which are more about um, MP's choice. So if you have a really good relationship with your MP, um, and this is like not in the sports rots kind of way, but hopefully in like the really good community building kind of way. If you have a really good um, relationship with your MP, last year they were getting a couple of hundred thousand dollars to disseminate to community um, organisations in their electorate. So it's definitely worth keeping that in mind um, for the next few months if something like that rolls out again and just picking up the phone and calling them when you see something like that. I think we might. Um, do you want to answer that question, John? Uh, we have one question from um, Ken um, about uh, staff employed as subcontractors. What I, what I suggest you do, Ken, is uh, it, some of the, the different situations get a bit technical. So um, we're happy to point you in the right direction offline, maybe, but uh, have a look at the detailed information. Uh, I believe uh, in some cases, subcontractors can be covered by JobKeeper. Um, but I'm not, off the top of my head, I'm not sure of the exact details. So we can certainly help you um, uh, with, with that. Um, and the ATO and others are pretty helpful in being able to answer those questions too. Um, I think that's Holly and I. I think, um, Danny, back to you to introduce Ian or, um, or are we handing straight to Ian? I'm not I think sure. we'll just hand straight to Ian. Wonderful. Over to you, Ian. Great. Thanks, Mo. Thanks. Um, good to be with you all this morning and to hear all of that very um, relevant practical information from John and Holly. So my role today is to tell you about three measures that the Community Broadcasting Foundation is putting in place to assist your station during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, they are, in short, a COVID-19 quick response grant round, which is open now. Uh, secondly, to talk about what's happening with our uh, usual round one for 2021 funding in a development operations and content grants. Um, I'll be talking further about that. And then 
Thirdly, about a COVID-19 crisis fund that we've established and the grant round associated with that. So I'll be telling you more about, uh, giving more information about those measures and how you can get CBF advice and assistance with any application that you make. And just to um, start off, I want to emphasize that uh, your best starting point in relation to finding out information on CBF funding opportunities is, is always the CBF uh, website and um, I'll just share the screen if I can now. So we'll just put this up and share it. So this I'm hoping is the uh, CBF website in front of you and you can see that it has a number of um, articles and points of information about the COVID-19 crisis and uh, specifically this is the first initiative here that we are have already opened. The other point I would like to make particularly is that the support team are here to assist you and if you go to our website and click on this particular panel here it will give you the information about who is the correct person at the CBF to assist your station because they have different responsibilities according to diff the different states in which stations are located. There's also broader information about our grants and funding that will be uh, available in the months to come and a message from our CEO. So please remember to, uh, to have a good look at the CBF website and to see that home page. It will be updated regularly and um, it's a good point to have a good understanding of the relevant conditions of CBF funding, as well as a starting point if you wanted to get in and make an application that I'm just about to tell you about. So um, the first item that we want to talk about today is the COVID-19 Quick Response Grant Round. And this is a grant opportunity that we're trying to get through as quickly as possible to get funding out to you. And it's specifically for stations without paid staff, which form a very large percentage of the overall uh, community broadcasting sector. And as we know from the information that was provided by John and Holly earlier, the Australian government stimulus packages, while they're um, quite uh, large and very helpful, are oriented towards businesses with staff. So a lot of stations can't access those uh, packages. Here's something for those stations and it's open right now. It provides grants of up to $2,000 to stations without paid staff to assist them to maintain operations under COVID-19 social distancing requirements. So the CBF is providing $200,000 from its reserves to allow these grants to happen and to be available quickly. Um, and we're hoping that uh, stations will take up this opportunity. It's, um, you can apply for either or both of the following. You can apply for purchase of small equipment, software, supplies and costs associated with maintaining operations under COVID-19 social distancing requirements. Or you can, be, you can seek reimbursement for costs related to COVID-19 social distancing requirements incurred since the 1st of January. So if you've already been um, expending money on setting up the remote operation of your station, um, in buying small equipment, in getting software like TeamViewer or other uh, software that assists your um, operation of the station and the uh, integration of people who are um, at home, then those are the kind of costs that you could um, seek reimbursement for or looking forward, you can seek funding for them now up to a level of $2,000. And I was just looking on our, um, on our Smarter Grant site this morning and uh, I can see that at least 20 stations have already um, engaged with that opportunity. We're expecting quite a few more to um, also do that over the next couple of weeks. So what I really need to emphasize is that we are trying to run this grant round very quickly. It is open this week. It is open through next week until 2 p.m. AEST 
on Monday, the 4th of May. So um, it's a very short grant round and we will be contacting stations about this um, clearly by email and by telephone. But I would really, if you're on this webinar and listening now, this is a great opportunity to get in early, to uh, get more information and to make an application as soon as possible. Um, for those of you who want to speak to the particular staff member who is supporting the COVID-19 quick response grant round, it's Barbara Baxter. Um, many of you would know Barbara. She was with the foundation for many years, in fact, over 20 years, and has come back um, to assist us with this particular process. And uh, you can find her phone and email details on our website, but just so you know, it's uh, 03 5968 9085. You can call her direct. So that's 03 5968 9085 and or email her at barbara at cbf.com.au. So um, that that process, uh, as I said, concludes on the 4th of May and we are expecting to be able to provide funding out to stations before the middle of May. So um, we know that stations can use that funding. Um, you will find that uh, it's very, uh, I've expressed how the general uh, terms of that funding will be available. We're quite open to, to uh, suggestion from stations it's about what kind of expenses might be relevant here, as long as it's re relevant to and relates to the purpose of helping your station to maintain its operations under COVID-19 social distancing requirements, um, then we're very willing to discuss that. So please take up that opportunity. Um, it's one of the first ones that we have available. For those of you who engage with CBF processes on a regular basis, you would know that uh, in in late March, the uh, CBF hit the pause button on our current funding round for development and operations and content grants for round one, 2020-21, that is funding that will be available normally in July. And we did that because we realised that the applications that stations had made since the round opened in early January uh, would or may not reflect the current priorities of stations given the pervasive economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic in, in the ensuing, in, well, very, very much in the last month when all of those effects and the erosion on income has become quite evident. So we wanted to um, reassess how we could use our resources to best effect in supporting as many stations as possible through the pandemic period and into 2020-21 and to allow stations to have an opportunity to have another look at their grant applications and uh, to consider how they might um, vary existing the existing application noting that in some cases the uh, things that they applied for may not be practical anymore in, in the sense that the uh, social distancing requirements of the COVID-19 pandemic may mean that you can't for instance undertake a uh, coverage of a festival that may have subsequently been cancelled or the OBs that you were expecting to do early in uh, 2020 21 financial year. So um, we are asking uh, all round one, round one applicants to consider removing any items or activities from their application that are no longer possible due to COVID-19 restrictions or no longer a priority under current conditions. Obviously you have to think about the situation of your station. I'm sure from the information that's uh, come through on the polling today, these things are very high in people's minds as they should be about how you adjust to the, to the new circumstances we find ourselves in and uh, looking at how your station will be um, best placed to, to, uh, to move through the, the, the pandemic crisis as, we, as it continues to roll on. So obviously um, what we're hoping is that if there are things within your application that are no longer a high priority that you will consider taking them out. I would stress that it, this is all voluntary. You don't have to review your application. Uh, we do hope you will do so. We are 
maintaining the current level of the application. So you can remove items or activities from your application. You can't add new ap activities or items into the application uh, to address COVID-19 impact because we'll have a specific separate process for that. And I'll talk about that in, the, in a moment. But we are hoping that um, stations will understand that what we're trying to do at this time is to ensure that the funds that are available that are coming to us in July can be used as broadly as possible, as effectively as possible to support all stations and to keep that in mind when they're reviewing their application. The round uh, will reopen uh, next Tuesday um, on the 28th of April. So that's when you'll be able to get further information about exactly what the changes are and to have your, an opportunity to look at that application again. It will only be reopened for a, uh, a couple of weeks. Again, it's going to close again on the Monday the 18th of May at 2 p.m. And it'll be assessed in the usual manner as a competitive process. And uh, while the outcomes that will flow from that uh, will be a few weeks later than they would normally be, um, we will expect to, we currently expect to be able to provide funding to stations around the same time, that is in July when we receive funds from the Department of Communications. So have, have a think about what opportunities there are there if you've got an application within round one as either a development operation grant or a content grant and consider how you might want to um, vary or remove items from that application. Um, your best bet of course is always to uh, seek advice from CBF uh, grant support team as to um, how you can uh, adapt or change your application and um, in case you don't know exactly who you should speak to for stations in Victoria and Tasmania, that's John King, who also looks after community television. If you are based in New South Wales or the ACT, you should speak to Liz Landray. And if you are in uh, Western Australia, South Australia, the Northern Territory or Queensland, Dean Lingui is the person to speak to. All of their email and contact details uh, their telephone, direct telephone lines are available from the homepage of the CBF uh, under that item that had the big ask on our homepage. If you click on there, you'll get that detail and you'll be able to contact them straight away. Um, if you do have any trouble getting through to uh, any of our staff, particularly in this uh, coming couple of weeks, um, with people working from home and uh, you know, and it, it may be that you might have to uh, leave a message so that they can call you back. The other opportunity you can, you can, you have there is to call our main line uh, that's, uh, and speak to Namina on our main line, which is 0383415900. And uh, Namina is quite willing to either refer you on to another grants uh, support team member if the, the, if the person who would normally deal with your station isn't currently available and you have something urgent you need to talk to them about, um, or to uh, leave a message for that person and have them ring you back as soon as they can. So that's what will be happening in relation to round one, 2021. Um, it will be reopening next Tuesday and be open uh, for a number of weeks until the 18th of May. The third item that I'd like to talk about now is a, a new thing for the CBF. We've established a COVID-19 crisis fund and we will have a grant round associated with that. Again, this is another grant round that will open next Tuesday on the 28th of April. And we open for several weeks and close on Monday the 18th of May. One of the early recommendations uh, from the task force that the uh, CBF and the CBAA uh, established to deal with COVID-19 matters was to establish a crisis fund that would be accessible to all stations. And so that's what the fund will do. It will provide assistance 
directly for matters that have um, have a, are related to the impact of COVID-19 in an economic sense on stations. Um, and we have put together a fund that currently has a level of $2.2 million available. Um, it's drawn together from current year funds that we've had available to us and 2020 funding and also another call on CBF reserves. The purpose of the fund is simply put to assist the sustainability of community broadcasting services to local communities and communities of interest across Australia throughout the pandemic period. And we aim to build on that initial level of 2.2 million. Uh, as you heard from John earlier, that uh, the CBAA has put in a specific request for further assistance of $5 million from the Australian government via um, Minister Fletcher and Minister Coulton. And um, both the CBF and the CBAA will also be seeking further contributions from philanthropic and other sources as we move forward through the pandemic period. So I want to emphasize uh, it is open to all stations and the application process will be as simple as possible. It will be framed around your need as expressed through a set of questions that will gather current and projected financial information. So we'll be asking for your current and projected operating costs and whether you expect to receive support through government or other assistance packages. And as we've heard earlier today, there are a number of different packages available through the Australian government and, and various state governments that are open to uh, stations. And uh, we would expect that you are applying for those levels of support that are open to you because we want to provide the limited funding that the foundation has as a supplement and a complement to those other uh, large forms of support that are available through government. Um, we'll also be asking you about the steps that you've been taking to reduce your costs and to mitigate the financial impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. And this information will assist us to build a data set that will be a key tool in determining how we can provide support as effectively as possible to as many stations as possible within the limits of the funds available. Um, so the degree, to the degree possible, the COVID-19 crisis assistance grants will assist grantees with operational costs based on the reduction to their key income sources that have been caused um, by the COVID-19 pandemic and also the increased expenditure that they've had to incur as a result of the impact of the, uh, of the crisis. It won't be a competitive, competi a competitive assessment process as our other grant processes are. A level of funding is expected to be made available to most applicants. As we have to wait on the receipt of Department of Communications funds for 2021, the grants will be announced in early July with payment to follow as soon as possible after that. So I emphasize again that the applications for this new specific COVID-19 assistant grants will close on Monday, May the 18th. They open next Tuesday and further information is available from the application form that will be accessible via our, webs our website from next Tuesday. And I would really emphasize that um, the sooner that you engage with the process, the better off you will be. You'll be able to ask queries of our staff and have a talk to them about exactly what you need to supply in terms of information. Get your application in early and that will, um, be the best way in which you can ensure that you receive that support. So that's a number of things that we've put in place so far. And um, clearly there, are, there will be a need to continue to provide support for the sector as we move further into this calendar year. Normally we would have a second round of funding available in July. That will be the case again this year and, and whether it is a, um, a usual competitive style round for development and operation grants and content grants is yet to be determined because we're, with the, 
things changing so quickly um, as a result of the impact, the, the, the uh, rolling on of the COVID-19 crisis, we have to reconsider closer to that time exactly how we should structure that further funding opportunity. And uh, in, a nor in a normal course of events, that would have about 10% of the 2020-21 uh, funding available in round two. That's certainly the case. It may be if um, that in June we decide that the focus has to be again on providing specific COVID-19 uh, related assistance. That call will be made in June. We will be having a second grant round that will start a little later in July. Um, and it may be a normal grant round for those of you who are uh, generally engaged with the CBF's biannual funding processes, or it may be a COVID-19 specific round. Again, it will also depend upon how successfully we are in gaining further support from the Australian government and other sources, and critically, when that funding becomes available. If it isn't available for that first grant round where we have already got $2.2 million in place, um, then we will try and flow it as soon as possible. And it may well be that the uh, funding is available from July. Normally our uh, second grant round runs through to November. I think I can safely say at this stage that um, we will be trying to provide funds as soon as possible. Uh, to stations later in the year and we'll be trying to bring that um, decision making process as far forward as possible so that the funds are available to stations as soon as we can make it available. Um, so that's really all I had to say other than to emphasise again that um, we will be throughout uh, the opportunities that I've just described we will also have our quick response grant um, opportunities available that are geared to deal with pressing needs that arise between our funding rounds. And, um, you know, we've seen there was a very strong demand on those during the bushfire crisis earlier this uh, year. Um, we can expect that there will be other emergencies and uh, causes for stations seeking assistance to uh, help them to uh, remain operational on on air um, if there are further floods and and uh, storm damage and uh, or other kind of issues that occur um, as we move forward through uh, 2020. So we have retained uh, a level of our reserves that it, we hope will be sufficient to deal with that uh, throughout the remainder of the calendar year and into 2021. Um, our support team. We'll be contacting all stations in coming weeks and uh, talking to talk to you about the, the range of opportunities that the foundation will make available. But again, I would emphasize that I, I would really think it is in your best interest to get on the front foot, to have a look at those opportunities as soon as possible. Um, we will be emailing uh, stations. We will be contacting stations directly by phone, but um, it really is in your best interest to seek out that information, to, um, to get in contact with our staff now and to put your applications in as quickly as you can. Remember our website, uh, www.cbf.org.au is um, the first point of, of finding out the current information. It will be updated regularly. We'll obviously also be using social media and our monthly uh, e-newsletter. If you're not signed up to our e-newsletter, this is a great time to do it, to make sure that you receive all the information uh, on a regular basis. Um, so speak to our grant support team, to Barbara, to John, to Dean and to Liz uh, as soon as you can. And uh, that will really help us to help you. Thank you. Back to um, Danny at this point. Ian, thank you so much for that. I'm just going to put into the chat box now uh, where people can go to to sign up to the uh, CBF newsletter. Um, as stated, cbf.org.au. When you get to that page, you'll notice sort of the 
uh, first three things uh, that are open there is the there's the uh, COVID-19 quick response grants, um, contacts details for all the grant support team who are working remotely, um, further information on all the stuff that Ian discussed, and also a crisis task force update from the CEO. So all great information there. Get on there and check it out. Um, uh, I believe that all of the questions that we've had have been answered. Oh, actually, Ren from uh, 3MDR asks, is it worth looking at a mentorship type arrangement for smaller stations to tap into uh, to help with all of this if there are stations willing to be mentors? Um, I'd say that would probably be the one that we will be discussing for a while now. John and Holly have answered that. They're going to take it under notice and have a look at it. Um, they're laughing at me now as well. Uh, that's And uh, the best thing about them laughing at me is that the recording of this session has been made available and we will be putting it up on the CBAA website as soon as I can render the video. The best thing about that is that future generations will be able to enjoy me grappling with online polls, which should provide an excellent perspective into life during COVID-19. I wanted to pass on down to future generations there on that one. Um, also, in regards to future CBAA webinars, as you will no doubt have noted, they've been coming thick and fast over the last couple of weeks. Uh, as we as a society collectively deal with COVID-19, that will continue to be the case. Uh, be sure to sign up to the CBAA E News if you want to find out more about that. Um, just go to the CBAA website, cbaa.org.au. Every page has the opportunity for you to sign up to uh, the E! News. Uh, thank you so much to Ian and all the staff at the Community Broadcasting Foundation. Thank you so much to John Bissett and Holly Friedland Lidicote from the CBAA. Thanks to Michaela and all the crew at the Community Media Training Organisations. Um, CBAA webinars will return. Thank you very much, everyone. And also, if you're doing something for ANZAC Day and you want us to promote it, send an email to office at cbaa.org.au. That's office at cbaa.org.au. Have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you all again very, very soon.